Welcome to the Holiday Hullabaloo. This is our holiday club. Um, you'll see us once a week on a Thursday, um, every week of the holidays, where we can celebrate being together. Um, we can do some really exciting uh, challenges, so watch out for those. Um, we've got some songs, some Bible stories, and we're really looking forward to you taking part. So I really hope you enjoy it. At the beginning, you would have seen us with some hope pictures um, and each week when you complete the challenges and send us pictures, we'll put yours in there. And, uh, and then after this bit, you are going to see a very special news report where you get to meet an amazing Bible character that we then talk about and learn all about. So keep your eyes peeled and let's get started for the holiday hullabaloo. Yay! This is the four o'clock news from the BBC, the headlines. This week we've been having reports of people taking selfies with the word hope. There are 35 days until children go back to school. This week the weather has mostly been sunshine and showers. This week's special report is from Sally, who is in Jericho, a city I believe that is about to be invaded. Sally, over to you. Yes, hello Susan. Today we're joining you from Jericho, where right outside these very walls there's an army building ready to attack. We're having many reports coming in from all sorts of terrible things going on. The people are so unsettled and living in absolute fear, uncertain of when this army will invade. In fact, just yesterday there was reports of spies that have come into the city, but, well, they seem to have disappeared. No one knows where they've gone. I have, however, managed to track down a lady who claims they arrived at her house. She's agreed to give us an interview. Hi, Rehab. <laughs> Hello. Um, thank you so much for talking to us today. Can you tell me a bit about yesterday? Yeah, well, I have a house just in town and yesterday two men arrived and it was clear that they were not from here. They had that look. They were definitely spies for the army outside, outside the walls. Oh. And I heard rumours that the king had sent soldiers to look for them. Oh my goodness! What? They have, that must have been terrifying! You must be so relieved when the guards came and took them away! No, actually! I actually hid the spies upstairs and I told the soldiers that they'd left earlier and headed in that direction. And if they hurried, they could catch them! Oh my goodness! How high on earth would you do that? Well, you're not in fear of your life. These are spies from the army. How do you know they're the good guys? No, well, we heard a little about this army and their gods. Did you know there are stories about the army crossing the Red Sea? It actually dried up so they could cross it. I mean, who does that? 
This god really is something, so I knew I needed to keep them safe, to save them and hoping in return they would save me and my family. Really? And do you think your plan will have worked? I trust these men and I trust their god and I let them climb out the window using this cord and I told them to head to the hills. They told me if I tied this red cord to my window and left it hanging, they would know not to harm us and we would escape. Wow, and, and you honestly believe this to be the case? That your fate depends on that bit of red string? Gosh, it really seems a bit far-fetched to me. Are you sure they're not just having a laugh? With the prospect of our city being invaded and defeated, my only hope is if I trust in their word and their God to save me and my family. So once this interview's done, I'm heading straight up to the window to tie this cord there as a sign that I have faith in what they've told me. Well, Susan, there you have it. To be honest, it's a bit of an unexpected story we had there. This lady hopes by saving the spies, even knowing nothing about them, that her family will be spared from an army attacking her city. All because of that little bit she heard about the army and their god. Well, back to you in the studio. Okay, thanks for that, Sally. Well, that's all we've got time for today, folk. Please tune in next Thursday for the news at four o'clock from the BBC. Wow, wasn't that amazing with Rahab? Whew. She's in a difficult spot, isn't she? one hand there's everyone that she knows and they're all doing all the different things that they think that will help um, and they think that they know what to do and they're all afraid of this um, army these Israelites who are far off and coming to get them and then on this hand there are the Israelites uh, she's heard a little bit about them she um, is starting to wonder if what they're talking about actually has something in it she's heard these rumors about this God of theirs and it sounds real it sounds like there's something more to it and yet she's only heard the tiniest bit the tiniest bit and a little rumor and it's made her question and wonder isn't that amazing well then she gets to meet the spies doesn't she she had two options right away didn't she call for the king send them away it should be a hero in her own people's eyes she will have stopped this invading army or welcome them in and ask them some questions. I love Rahab because she just goes for it, doesn't she? She's, she's brave and she decides that she's going to speak to them and she ends up hiding them and protecting them because she saw something in those spies that she didn't see in her people and that she didn't see in herself. She saw a hope. Now, often we say things like, oh, I hope this happens and I hope that happens. And it's a bit like, cross your fingers, hope I pass my test or hope it doesn't rain. But what Rahab saw in the spies was not any of this. This made no difference. What Rahab saw in the spies was a real hope. A hope in a God that loved them. A hope in a God that spoke to them and had a relationship, a friendship with them. Where they could speak to him and he would show them what to do. Isn't that amazing? Um, and we often would love to hear God speak out of a light bulb or something really clearly. But God does speak to us. He speaks to us today in the Bible. My Bible. All coloured, isn't it? But he speaks to us in the Bible and he tells us so much about um, life and what it's about. And here, right at the beginning, we read about Rahab, who stood up against the norm, against all that was going on, even when life was crazy. No one knew what was going on. They were all guessing and unsure. And you know, the thing is, the spies and the children of Israel, they didn't know the future either. But they knew the person who was in, that held the future, that cared for their future and that cared for them. And that's God. And their hope was in them. Their hope was in God, not in what they could do and all that stuff. And so Rahab had the choice then. After she'd asked the spies to help her, she could have just carried on with her the way that they were doing and seeing what was going to happen. Rahab chose to do what the spies had told her to. The spies said, we will take care of you if you put this red rope out of your window. Keep those people in your house who you want protected 
and we will get you out and we will get you out safely. And God promises that to us, doesn't he? He promises that if we listen to him, if we do what he says, if we follow a right and careful path with God, that we, he will lead us in the right way. And it's not about earning our way and not about doing things so God likes us more. God loves you so much already. He's not telling you to do things because he wants you to be a little robot. He's telling you to do things because he made us and he knows how life works best. And for Rahab and the spies, the spies told her that you need to do this because that's how we can help you. And God says that to us, doesn't he? I need you to do this and I will help you. God's not limited like the spies were, but God does ask us to do things. And that's lovely because he just loves us so much. He wants to show us the best way to live. And so Rahab, she chose to hang that rope out of the window. She chose to have her family with her and she was rescued. And do you know something? Not only was she rescued and taken into the family of the children of Israel, she was a great, great, great grandparent of Jesus. Jesus who came and lived on earth. Jesus, God's son, who loved us so much that he lived a perfect life. And when he died, he rose again from the dead to show that he had conquered death and that that was no longer um, powerful over us and that we can one day go and live with him and know God as our friend. So the story of Rahab tells us that even if our faith is tiny, 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 if we look to God and ask him to be our friend and be in relationship with him, life will be so much different. So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see what next week what hero we're going to see and what hope we can have. Hope in a God that loves us and cares for us. Hope when things are uncertain. Thanks for listening and we'll see you soon. Bye. Hiya, my name is Neil McMillan. I'm going to say a short prayer. So let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you are the friend who gives hope to every one of us. We have hope because you're so great and powerful. You rose from the dead. You have conquered death. You have conquered sin. You bring life and joy to every person who trusts in you. Thank you that your hope shines into our lives. And so we pray that today, whatever we're doing, that we would be filled with hope, that we would have your presence with us, that even when things feel uncertain, we're not sure what's going to happen next, when things are changing in our lives or in the world around us, Lord, please be the one who gives us hope every day. Bless us in all the activities that we're going to do now and in the things that we'll share together. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you're brave enough to accept it, this week's challenge for all of you to take part in is Household Olympics. Can you please video your household doing various Olympic sports, not necessarily together? There are five that we would definitely want you to try. Team toboggan, archery, tennis, javelin and horse riding. I'm afraid we don't provide the horses, you'll have to improvise. And then choose some that you want to try yourself. Show us your creativity. Could be kayaking, rock climbing, sea swimming, wrestling wild bears, keepy uppies, cycling, skipping, throwing wellies. If you think it should be an Olympic sport, then you try it. Go on, you know you want to. Whatever you do, can you please send your videos to us, landscape, by Tuesday 14th July at 5pm. Send it to the email address holidayclub at kilmallyfreechurch.org That's holidayclub at kilmallyfreechurch.org Have fun! <laughs>